my wife, female slash 29, cheated on me, male slash 32, and I hit her. This is a bit long, so please accept my apologies and gratitude to anybody who takes the time to read it. For obvious reasons, this is a throwaway account. My wife and I met in 2008 when we were both on vacation. We met in Madrid, and it was a fairly conventional first meeting. From across the bar, our gazes locked, and I approached her. That night, we ended up going home together. We agreed to stay in contact after spending the following three days having, drinking, and soaking up the sun. She returned home, I concluded my travels, and we started a year-long LDR before I moved in with her. During the LDR, she admitted to me that she had cheated on a prior boyfriend and felt horrible about it, but that his decision to leave her was extreme, and that infidelity wasn't necessarily a panacea, particularly since it was just a kiss. She was assessing my response and very definitely cheating, I realize now. This I can forgive and forget because LDR and it occurred a long time ago, but not what happened last week. I informed her at the time that it was a deal-breaker, and that if I saw her flirting with another guy, I'd drop her. In a relationship, there are two absolute no-nos, violence and adultery. We married a year after I relocated, and she became pregnant again a year later. I was ecstatic. She appeared distant, unhappy, and concerned for the first two months after learning, and then after I pressed and prodded, she broke down and said she had a one-night stand around the time of conception, and that the child may not be mine. I was on a plane home two days later and hadn't spoken to her for a month. I ignored all of her texts and phone calls at first, but ultimately I gave in and we chatted. She stated she was going to get an in utero paternity test and that if the baby wasn't mine she would abort it, but she wanted me to come back first. I returned and she received the exam. I was there when she received. The findings, it's not my fault. I informed her that if she didn't schedule the appointment that day, I was going to see a divorce lawyer as soon as I got out of the hospital. She arranged for the appointment to be held a week later. On the day of the appointment, I drove her and held her hand, since an abortion is a horrific experience for a woman under any conditions. In the vehicle, she sobbed and begged me to wait, change my mind, try to make it work, anything except go through with it, and I looked her dead in the eyes and told her I couldn't itch your body and your life. So do whatever you want, but I will not raise another man's kid. That kid will be the physical incarnation of your treachery and a constant reminder of what you did. That is something I will not do. Divorce or abortion. Details should be edited. I want a divorce. I filed for divorce as soon as she hesitated. I never gave up trying to persuade her. I counseled against having an abortion. She didn't want to retain the child while losing the marriage. She wanted both. She told me straight out that she would abort if I left her, and she even told me before I flew back that even if the baby was mine and I divorced her, she would have an abortion. She specifically wanted to retain the kid and have me raise it with her, and unless I remained, she was going to have the abortion anyway. That wasn't going to happen. She asked whether I would give her another opportunity if she had it. Yes, I said. My wife was my everything. Sue me, sue me. I'm not sad I declined to play daddy to her illegitimate offspring. She obtained the abortion. There were issues, and she was forced to stay in bed for a month. She was short with me for a bit after that. Cold and unappealing. We had lost our spark. I tried, but she did not. She told me one night after a few drinks that she despised me for forcing her to choose, and I told her that she deserved to suffer for what she'd done. I instantly regretted speaking this out loud, despite the fact that that is precisely how I felt and still feel. When I got home from work one day early, I discovered her weeping on the sofa, with a guy next to her comforting her, a guy I'd known for a long time. He was a co-worker of hers. Their expressions told me all I needed to know. He was known as the father. It wasn't just a one-night fling. She revealed they'd had a three-month affair after I hauled him out of the home by his neck. I'll never know whether this is the whole truth. I still accept it and have ceased asking. I filed for divorce and quickly booted her out of the home. She begged, wept, and pleaded for months, and I finally gave in and took her back. I told her she had to leave her job and stop communicating with me. She agreed and made the call right away. We moved away from her city and purchased a home in mine at the other end of the nation. We went to marital counseling and things improved. Slowly but steadily, we progressed from strength to strength. We not had complete transparency on all accounts and accepted that this was the way things were. I eventually stopped glancing at her phone. Things were going swimmingly between us. We had a terrific life.
were both travel addicts and went on a lot of vacations, and we began talking about having kids. We tried for two years to have a kid, but nothing came of it. But the practice was a lot of fun, so what the heck. This has been the situation for many years. When the most recent incident occurred, I was entirely vulnerable and my defenses were down. For a couple of months, she had been somewhat aloof, but not to the point that I was concerned. When I questioned her about it, she always made a point of being nice and telling me that everything was okay, but her default, when not encouraged, was to be silent and seek out her own place. I remained at home one night while she went out drinking with her pals. I was awakened at 4 a.m. by the sound of her voice below. I stepped outside and inquired. If it was her, she didn't respond since she couldn't hear me. I realized she was on the phone relatively fast, and because of the hour, her recent seclusion, and her problematic connection with loyalty, I opted to listen in. She was flirting with me and saying things like, I miss you too, and I love you too. I knew it had to be him, I was convinced of it. Then she began gushing about the hotel, how nice the room service was, and when she was going to see him again, and I'd had enough. She knew she'd been caught as I raced down the stairs like a bull. She began crying, screaming and cursing me, claiming she'd gone to a doctor here, and that she'd informed her during the abortion that there was some type of issue. She was inebriated, slurring her words and weeping, but somewhere in the minutiae of terms like tear, scar tissue, and permanent, I got out of her that her uterus had been injured, and it was doubtful she would ever be able to carry a kid to term. She discovered this three months before, just about the time she began acting distantly again. I the phone from her grasp. She attempted to reclaim it. We battled back and forth until I pushed her back onto the sofa and instructed her not to get up until I said so. I sat on the chair next to her and went over every detail. He sent a half dozen text messages, asking when she was going to leave the bar, how much fun they'd had and how much he missed her voice. Obviously, all of the earlier texts had been removed, but she hadn't yet deleted the ones from that night. She looked at me with daggers in her eyes as I read the notes aloud. I repeatedly begged her to explain herself, and she ultimately leapt up and began shouting again. She yelled that she'd taken the day off work and plunged to meet him halfway, and that they'd all day at a motel. She cried that when she heard the doctor's news, she regarded me as an adversary and him as an ally. She yelled at me, I'm not sorry, and claimed that I had wrecked her. Life! I shouted back that I was delighted she had the abortion, and that if I could murder him and take it away from her as well, I would. She smacked me in the face, and I retaliated by slapping her. Hard. It was open-handed, but considerably harder than she had struck me. She sat back down on the sofa, surprised and in amazement, as she clutched her face and sobbed. When she grabbed for her phone, I took it from her grasp before tossing it and shattering it against the wall. I walked upstairs to my room and paced back and forth, while she sat below weeping, and we remained there till dawn. She was sound sleeping when I walked downstairs. I jolted her up and instructed her to take a shower and get out. That I'd already spoken with my lawyer to file for divorce, and that she wouldn't be remaining in the home while I was gone. She cried and pleaded with me not to go forward with it. She pretended to be intoxicated, but didn't mean it. She said she made up the tale of meeting him to upset me and that I was her one and only and so on. She apologized for punching me and refused an apology for my hitting her back, claiming she deserved it. I agreed she deserved it and told her it was a good thing she wasn't expecting an apology because she was about to receive one. That was a week ago. She moved back home with her parents this week. She contacts me on a daily basis. Ten times every day she sends long, tearful text messages that I don't read or respond to since my lawyer says I can't contact her unless I go via him. I'm proceeding with the divorce. FML. Edit. I forgot to say that I have responded to multiple comments, and it wasn't until someone pointed it out that I realized I should have said it in the OP. She indicated that she had no desire to raise the child on her own. If I divorced her, she was going to do it. She didn't want to keep the baby, and I forced her to get rid of it. She wanted us both to keep it and be the father to the kid of the guy she cheated on. At this time, I still felt the pregnancy was the result of a one-night fling she had while on a ladies' weekend away. She wasn't spending the weekend with her girlfriends. 